seems to me that every time one visits these locations in the Arctic or in Lapland or wherever, the first thing that you think when you come there is that it's, it's totally empty. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like there's nothing there. But then when you sort of just uh, calm yourself into the, the environment and, and start to be more aware of where you are, then all of a sudden you notice that there's, there's a tremendous amount of stuff going on, yeah. an animals and plants and insects. And That's a beautiful and point weather. because that, yeah. the power of life, especially in the, the summer, in the warm season, it's so rapid yeah, and so it's, strong it's somehow. It's, yeah. it's really, yeah. and first it, it seems like empty and yeah, dead. dead. But it's, it's anything but. Yeah. hours of, of different kind of impros in different locations and started editing with, with that then. But of course eventually it, it starts to sort of take on a life of its own because you yeah. you start to remember what you did yesterday and what you filmed yeah. yesterday yeah. and what what the other guy did yesterday so things, start, actually, it, things start to take shape and then yeah. it, comment on different things. Yeah. And, yeah. It was somehow nice to do a film with this kind of idea that we weren't so concerned of what kind of footage we didn't have yet. We were more thinking that what did we got today and then went along like day by day and shot by shot and what would be interesting in the next scene or the, what, what would be the next kind of idea that we got from the last yeah. scene. And of course the uh, difficult conditions was a big challenge for the for the actual dance scenes because the temperature yes, was yes, like two degrees or two something. degrees <laughs> Celsius. Which, uh, I don't I don't know if you can actually really see it in the film, but yeah, yeah. maybe in a couple of places you can see it. In a couple see of places, <laughs> we're just waiting. Blue lips. We can, yeah, we're just waiting till we can get, get our sweaters back on. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. We had a lot of good material of, of Thomas improvising, but he had this. Thermal, thermal underwear. So underwear. We couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't use the footage <laughs> because it, it was so hot. So <laughs> yeah. Svalbard is actually an Arctic desert almost. Mm. It rains very little. very little every year, and that's one of the reasons that all the all the traces of humans stay there for a long, long time. Also, all of the ruins that are older than a certain year are, are automatically protected by law in Svalbard, so one has to be careful also not to disturb any of the human settlements that are, are there, no matter how destroyed it looks, it's, yeah. it's, it's a historical monument in a way. The place where we filmed most of the shots were the buildings, it's, it's quite a unique location, it's it's called Grumont, and it's it's an old Russian uh, or Soviet mining town. Uh, Your settlement is yeah, 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 settlement. Uh, I think it's been abandoned since maybe the 60s or so. Yeah. So it's uh, quite an amazing place. Yeah. Yeah. It went down. It went down. It went down. Covered. Yeah. I was looking at the, the ground and said, okay, well, what's, what's this here? And then all of a sudden I realized it's a graveyard. Yeah. A graveyard way up on the hill there. And um, it was just sort of quite touching to think of, think of the people who'd lived there and, and yeah. died right and whatever, yeah. whatever their life stories were and how, how they lived in, in that place yeah. far from home. All the music of the piece is based on sound recordings that we did on site. So we'd be recording our singing and different sounds in the tent and in different locations in Svalbard. Then we gave the music to Sputnikburg to finish it up and, and make this compositions out of it. 
it's quite typical of these places that the, sometimes the animals come really close. And we saw some whales and seals. Yeah. And, and tons of birds, which is a, a lot of the birds are actually in the soundtrack as well. Menemme juuri kuvauspaikalle täällä Ruumont Byenissä tuonne hyvin korkealle. In Svalbard, it's it's mandated by law that you have to carry firearms just because of um, the small possibility of encountering a polar bear. So, so that's something that has to be taken into account. Eli meillä on tässä nyt jääkarhu ansalankojen testaus, eli leikin tässä nälkäistä jääkarhu, joka on tulossa leiriin ja katsotaan miten käy. Käy. Olen nälkäinen jääkarhu. Jep. Mm, täällä on meputtia. <tos> Oho! Tuota, tuota. Oli mouli. <tos> We didn't see any polar bears, thank goodness. <tos> Se ei ollut se, mutta... Eikä toi ole sitä pyydettyä. Mä otan nyt vähän voitua. Julka ilta me ottaa vähän napan DR. Tekee ah, niin hyvä muskuli, muskuli, pehmuli. It always takes a few, three or four days to like... Settle into it. Settle into it and the, the camp life and... Because of course the tent is small and packed, and you have a lot of lot of gear, and yeah. it takes some time to get the like the groove going, <laughs> get the procedure right. But that's right. It really like when it starts working, it really. It's something you don't get anywhere else. Yeah, anywhere else. you really like get your mind off, off, of normal things, and then really like centered in the real yeah. <laughs> real things absolutely i think we've learned a lot about about dance and 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 filming, filming dance and editing definitely, editing definitely. dance so this was almost like this first kind of experiment experiment and very educational and eye opening artistically so hopefully we can maybe develop this this idea further because yeah there there seems to be some some quite interesting potential here for this this kind of approach yeah definitely poor bear poor bear don't come knocking on my door Polar bear, polar bear, don't you come knocking on my door.